Okay, welcome back. Now in this video, this is basically a walkthrough of setting up a campaign on SiteScout. So now what I've done is I've logged into my account and what I did was I, cr I clicked on the create uh, button, which was a green button, which will allow allows me to create a brand new uh, brand new campaign. So initially what you're seeing here is we are on the campaign basics setup page. This is where you're going to set up the initial parameters for whatever campaign that um, that you're running. Now I've already done the the market research, gone out and gotten the banners for the offer that I'm going to promote. So you're going to see me populate it right here. And this particular offer is a, a ClickBank offer that I found. And it is called Fat Loss Factor. So I'm putting the name in here. And I'm going to put the click through URL. So I'm just going to grab that on another screen here. I'm going to put it right here. So this is my tracking URL and it's going to directly link to the uh, the fat loss factor ebook program that I'm promoting here on ClickBank. Now you're going to notice a couple of things. I've passed these two tokens right here. One is site ID and one is ad ID. And by passing these tokens in my own tracking system, I can see what sites are generating the clicks and what and conversions and what ad in particular is generating the uh, the clicking and the conversions. Because one of the things, if you remember, I talked about with your banners is it's not necessarily the banner that has the highest click through rate that is the winning banner. It's the banner that converts the best. And what I mean by that is it's the banner that generates the most conversions. So you're going to be trying to figure out for your banners which one is generating the highest earnings, uh, the or the highest earning CPA that uh, that uh, you're, you're capturing with that particular uh, particular ad so that's why I've used those tokens now if you look at the bottom of this video you'll see here that I have included a PDF that uh, basically lists all the tokens that you can use that are available at uh, at site scout so that you can get really uh, micro detail as far as your analysis is concerned now on site scout the uh, the bidding is done on a CPM basis that means for every 1,000 impressions you're bidding a certain dollar amount so I'm going to start that at yeah I mean you could go as little as uh, a little as a penny you're not going to get a whole bunch of traffic doing that I would suggest I mean if you're going to target run of the network traffic that you start off at like 20 cents or something like that but if you're really very particular about who you want to reach and I do already have some demographic targeting available for the fat loss factor ad so let's say I wanted to start my bid at 50 cents and I'm going to list my campaign as online now when it comes to targeting Okay, you have an option of targeting both the web and mobile devices. I don't recommend that you target both at the same time. I recommend creating separate campaigns for each platform. It just makes it easier to uh, to manage. Now, if you're going to target mobile, you'll notice that as soon as I click target mobile, that this option became available. When I click right here, this option kind of grays out. But with mobile targeting, what you can do is you can actually target by device, you can target by carrier, you could target by the operating system. So it gets very, very micro detailed as far as how you can target uh, by, uh, by, by mobile. So this is very, very powerful in a sense if you want to get into mobile, uh, mobile advertising. And like I talked about before, I mean, mobile uh, media buying is still really very much in its infancy. And I think that the ones who jump on it quick and take advantage of it, uh, they're going to do extremely well. Now you have an option here of excluding Wi-Fi for certain campaigns. People don't want to target people who are on Wi-Fi. They want to target people who are on a specific carrier. Now if you remember in the uh, the PDF uh, about media buying tac tactics, I talked about the reason why this could be possible is that there could be some people who are selling, uh, for example, games or in-game um, apps or, or whatever that requires mobile billing okay by a particular carrier so by excluding Wi-Fi uh, you don't have to worry about people not having the ability to pay because now you're targeting people who are only on carrier and that's the reason why people might shut off Wi-Fi uh, Wi-Fi traffic so for this particular campaign let's target only the web for now okay so then we come on to frequency capping and frequency capping simply means how many times do you want your banners shown in a given time period. So you can see by default it's set to show three banner impressions every 12 hours. I recommend when you're starting off to drop this to one banner impression for every 24 hours. And once you realize a hefty profit on the campaign then you can start increasing the uh, the frequency of having your banners displayed in order to get uh, more exposure. And then with the budgeting you have to, to list your budget right here. For run of the network traffic I think you have to 
you have to have a budget of $25 regardless. But if you're not doing run of the network traffic, I mean, like I said, to get tested, you could do extremely small uh, daily budgets. So you're not uh, you're not having sleepless nights worrying about how much money you burn on your credit card. You can really limit how much you spend on a daily basis. Now, the other th option you see here is deliver the budget evenly throughout the day. Now, this is important because conversions happen at different times during the day, and it all depends on what you're offering. Okay, it all depends on what you're offering because you don't know how an offer might perform in the early hours of the day versus the later hours of the day. I know, for example, when it comes to the dating market that the offers usually best convert after 3 p.m., whereas they, the, the worst conversion time is usually between 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, in the morning. And then once again, the weekends are also very good for the dating market. So these are some of the things that you got to take into consideration. You got to understand and using a market research tool or a spy tool like AdBeat, these are the, this is kind of some of the information that you can get as, um, as far as what, uh, what, when a campaign is, uh, campaign is running. Now I've set this up as daily. I mean, you could set it up as all time or you could just shut it off and just let it keep piling up, but I don't recommend that you do that. Now you see this this other option here is called view through conversions, and the reality is is not everybody is going to be clicking on your um, on your banner, okay? But that's not to say that they don't somehow become a conversion um, later down the road. I know it sounds a bit weird because they didn't necessarily click on your banner, but the thing is that when Site Scout shows your banner, they actually drop a cookie or an ID on that person's computer. So, for example, you could um, you could possibly uh, be dropping retargeting and through uh, through through PPV or something like that. And you know, Site Scout gets all of this data, and somehow they manage to. Um, identify certain computers whereas that they don't necessarily have to click on your banner they might convert somehow somewhere else down the road but site scout will show you that maybe the initial banner impression is what got them through your your funnel so but I mean this is a little bit more of an advanced feature I don't personally use it um, so you can leave that as uh, as off now for flight date uh, flight date if you remember from the glossary simply means the the start date and the end date of your campaign for example, if you're running a Halloween-related campaign, obviously you're, it's going to be for a certain flight date. It's not going to be at, you know exceed into the, the summer months or anything like that. So you you might want to do this if you want your campaign to end automatically on a certain date. Now the audience capture uh, feature right here basically is retargeting. Okay, so what this uh, the Site Scout platform allows you to do, it allows you to retarget people without ever having to place the site scout retargeting pixel and the way it does that is is that site scout will automatically add them to a retargeting list once they click on your um, on your banner and you could select whatever retargeting list that you want to retarget or you could shut that off or you could build a new list on capturing the landing page clicks and then you could select the list that you want to do that or you could do that on the conversion page or you could do that on all three uh, three pages of your sales funnel or your lead funnel and you could put people on a new retargeting list and then target them further down the road. Obviously you have to go and create the retargeting list first before you can uh, you could target the prospect. So that essentially is how to create the uh, the initial framework of the campaign that you want to run on uh, run on on Site Scout. And what I'm going to explain in the next few videos is certain things such as selecting the traffic sources, uploading your creatives, geotargeting, and other added features that you're going to want to set on your campaign to get the most uh, the most out of it.